evening, everyone. Hopefully the music will be muted in just a second. My name is Angela Fullwood, and I am the supervisor of Title I Parent and Family Engagement. And I'm so excited that we're here today, partnering with Hillsborough Community College to talk to, we have today Tanya Marrero Gonzalez. She is our guest speaker from the HCC, our, our Ybor City campus. She is um, going to be speaking with us today on opportunities that you all have to help guide your children, guide yourself into higher education. She is the Enrollment Development Coordinator, again, at the Ybor City campus. So I'm going to give it over to Hi. Tanya, who is here with us. Take it away, Tanya. For this opportunity and your introduction and also the parent and family engagement department at his world county public schools uh, for the opportunity as well we are very well known here in, in the local uh county his world county uh shortly as hcc uh long list his world community college um i'll be presenting today just general information about our institution as an opportunity for uh prospective students who finish their high school education um, just a quick FYI, I will be doing a Q&A session at the very end for those who are present uh, at the moment. And then we can find, at once that I do that, then we will be able to finalize the presentation. But before, um, you know, continuing with the presentation, just a little bit about myself. I, like Ms. Fullwood mentioned, I am the uh, current Enrollment Development Coordinator for his World Community College in the Ybor City campus. Before that, I used to serve as a district bilingual school counselor at his World County Public School. And I did offer um, guidance services to the international student pop population to include refugees, immigrants, and English language learners. Um, in addition, I help Spanish speaking students and their family uh, in their college and career planning needs uh, through the Pasos al Futuro program. Before that, um, I was an academic advisor again at HCC uh, and I did help uh, the Social in Arts and um, English for Academic Purposes program students. Moving on. Um, I would like to share uh, with you our mission and our vision because that's very important uh, that you, so you know where we stand and where we want to take our students. Our mission is to transform lives by providing open access to an exceptional teaching and learning environment that inspires students to contribute to the local community and global society. We envision to promote a thriving, motivating community in which students achieve their full potential by providing access to an affordable, innovative, high quality, and lifelong education. Hmm. So just a very basic um, understanding of what, what is the community college. Um, the American, American education system provides a range of different higher educational options or post-secondary options once the student finish high school. Uh, they can attend a technical college, a community college or a university. The community college is a two-year institution, so they, they offer uh, programs that are two year, up to two years long, <clears throat> and they're of public nature. Uh, they have reasonable priced classes as well, so it's very affordable. Uh, their programs range from, from workforce to technical to academic nature. So they also serve as a pathway to a four-year degree at a university. And I'll talk a little bit about that later on. Uh, honestly, there's no right or wrong. It all depends on what the student wants to do, uh, you know, to where they want to start. They can certainly start at a technical college, a community college, or right away into a university. There's certainly uh, what we call articulation agreements, uh, which are agreements between these institutions that allow students to transfer between each other. Very important. The state of Florida have a total of 28 colleges and HEC is certainly one of them uh, located here in his rural county. We have a total of five campuses, but we serve as one college. So our location is at Brandon, 
Dave Del Mabry, Clam City, South Shore, Ebor City. And we also offer distance learning or also known as online or hybrid uh, type of classes. So the students can actually do classes online through their computer at home, or they can do a half time hybrid, uh, which is one day a week, they will go to a classroom for a lecture and then half of it will be online. <clears throat> HCC was founded in 1968. It was the second to last of all the 28 uh, colleges here in Florida. And like I said, we have five locations. Uh, students can receive services in any of our campuses. So once a student submit an HCC application and they select a home campus, that doesn't mean that the student has to go to that one campus. They actually can register for classes at any other location. But it's very important that they allow time for travel time between classes. Um, and arrive safe. We um, offer general educational classes in all of our locations, but there are some programs that are limited to a campus, to a location specific. For example, our nursing program is available at Delmi, South Shore, and, and Plant City. Criminology and criminal justice is available at Ybor City. Uh, culinary, it's available at dance at, at Del Mabry, if you will. So who is HCC? Who are the people who attend here, uh, you know, to our institution? So this is the uh, latest data that we have. Uh, in the 2017 and 18 school year, we have a total of close to 46,000 students enrolled in our credit and non-credit classes. A median age uh, for students is 21. We had a total of 2,192 international students attended HCC. Seven, uh, close to 18% are Black and African Americans and 29% uh, Hispanics. Um, it doesn't show in the screen um, the graphic, that circular graphic, but we have about 50%, 57% uh, who are females and 43% uh, who are male students, so it's closely evenly uh, in that regard. So that's uh, what HCC is, who, who we are. Now we're, I'm going to talk about our program. So we have a little bit over 180 pro, 80 programs. That, to, that includes 34 associate in arts degrees, um, transfer tracks for students completing their education at a university. So an Associate of Art, it's that degree that will allow students to transfer to a university for a total of four years. So they can start their AA here, do two years, and then transfer a guarantee transfer with a GPA of 2.0 or higher to any of our state uh, universities. Most of our students go to USF, but they have the option to go to a, other programs, other um, universities as well here in Florida. Some of the tracks are computer science, psychology, dramatics, arts, engineering, music. Now 54 associate in science degree programs for the, for workforce development. Um, those associate uh, in science are, are of technical na nature. So that means that the student will take two to three years of, of classes, worth of classes, and they'll, they will be able to apply for a career. Some of those examples are, uh, uh, are um, nursing, registered nurse, accounting, um, aquaculture, criminology, and criminal justice. Then we have about 80 college credit certificates and PSAB programs. So the college and credit certificates are just a prescribed amount of classes that are specialized in, in a topic. Uh, the student can take, they're very short in nature, they can take about a year, a year and a half. Then the PSAB programs plus uh, secondary adult vocational certificates, those are the workforce. So for example, if a student wants to do uh, the police academy, uh, fire academy, um, auto collision, um, welding, that's the type of programs that they will be taking. And those are based on clock hours. So once the student meet, uh, 
those clock hours, then they will be able to get that certification. Aside from the academics, we also offer some student services that students can take advantage of. We have academic advising, uh, which ideally the student meets if, uh, once a semester. Uh, academic advice and students can do some um, academic planning. So, you know, distribute the classes of their degree per semester and just make sure that they're in track for graduation. Uh, they can uh, receive degree audits and see which, credit, which credits or which classes they need to be able to finish their degree. And that's just an example of what they can do with academic advising. Academic Success Center, uh, it's our tutoring services, so students have the opportunity to receive free tutoring sessions uh, by appointment. Uh, we have admission registration in records. Uh, I, typically, students will see them in the, during the enrollment step uh, or getting admissions to, to our college. We have the Career Resource Centers where students will find resources that can help them uh, build uh, for a career, things like uh, how to write a resume, webinars on how to do certain things like a job interview, et cetera, et cetera. So those are some of the things they also can, if they are looking for a job, what they will also offer just a listing of job opportunities here in the local uh, area. Disability services as well, and that will be for uh, permanent and temporary disability. This is voluntary. The student has to self-identify and go and, and request disability services. And when I said temporary disabilities, this mean this mean if a student had an accident, broke an arm, and needs somebody to take notes for him or her, they can go to the disability the office of disability services and request that service. Uh, we have a new welcome center here in Denver City where transfer students like current trans HCC transfer students hoping to transfer to a university can get information about those requ requirements to um, get into their uh, major at different universities. We also have some specialized transfer program with USF and FMU. Uh, USF will be the FUSE program and then FMU will be the IGNITE program. And that's just add an additional, additional layer of support for those students. And they're technically considered either USF students or FMU students attending HCC during the first two years of their bachelor's degree. They can also do, do if they need help with submitting an HCC application or just registration for classes, they can also come to the Welcome Center to receive that. We have a wonderful HCC Honors Institute. Uh, students can apply for, for that. There's different uh, admission criteria that they can be, that they can look and so they can consider the students uh, getting to the program. But it's just another wonderful opportunity where allow, that will allow students to do extracurricular activities uh, in a month in a more enhanced um, uh, curi curriculum, if you will. That we also have the English for Academic Purposes program, so that's our ESOL or ELL program, so that's uh, English for as a second language. So any students who English is not the first language, they have the opportunity to learn English at an academic level and prepare them for any of our uh, programs and transfer to a university. We have student, cl student clubs, we have the Student Government Association, we have the Test Center, Veteran Services, STEM Transfer Center, and many more services that students can take advantage of, of while being here at HCC. Very briefly about financial aid, uh, there's different ways that the students can secure funds for college. Um, first option will be through the FAFSA to the federal government. They can qualify for the Pell Grant or any other scho federal scho scholarship, a student loans, and uh, the work and study program. Very important to point out that uh, the Pell Grant, it's, it's free money, but students have to keep and uh, maintain an academic, um, a good academic progress and many other things to be able to, to keep receiving that. Um, that scholarship every year. It's available every year on October 1st, and the student will have to submit the application 
as long as every year as, as long as they're attending uh, college or the, or the university the work the federal federal work and study program pretty much allows students to have a job on campus uh, it is really great because it also will work around the students uh, class schedule and it's just again another great opportunity to to get paid um, and receive that additional funding for for college then we have the Florida financial aid application and this is more particular for uh, senior students the state of Florida offers different of the scholarships opportunities one of them it's bright futures which is the, the most popular some of the requirements are um, you know community service hours a certain uh, GPA and then the SAT or ACT scores and you can get that information through searching over the internet in their website for the qualifications. Or the student can talk with the, their college and career counselor at their high school to get more information. We also have the HCC Foundation. We have two uh, cycles for application uh, each semester. Uh, and we offer a variety of uh, in institutional scholarship for our HCC students. And then students can apply for private scholarships outside with different organizations. Um, a great example would be the Hispanic um, a Scholarship Foundation. Um, locally, we have Hasboro Education Foundation. They also offer uh, a scholarship for senior students and eighth grade students. Now I'm going to talk about 10 reasons to study at HCC. We have a very desirable location because we are located in, in not only in Florida, but here in Tampa. There's plenty of, of water, sunshine, beaches in Tampa, and we're in the Tampa Bay area. Um, there's Bush Gardens, Disney World, it's an hour away. So it's really, really appealing for, for students to attend HCC because of that. We have a strong university transfer program, like I mentioned before, we have a FUSE program with USF, um, and then we have the IGNITE uh, program with FMU, Florida Agricultural and Mechanical University. Um, as an HEC graduate, students are guaranteed to enter into any of our 11 Florida State University, um, including the University of South Florida, and this is something that I didn't mention before. <clears throat> We have we actually have a University of Florida Plant City Education Center where students can um, transfer uh, to some of the UF programs that can be offered through that uh, uh, campus locale, location, uh, but the majors are limited. The same way will be for FUSE and FMU. Uh, Ignite uh, majors are limited, but it's uh, just another opportunity that the students have um, to transfer to many, um, to some of our local or nearby uh, universities. And then we have so many articulation agreements, agreements especially with H his Royal Technical Colleges to us and then us to, universe, to the University of South Florida. A great example is if a student finished in a social science in nursing with us, then they can apply for a bachelor's degree at USF and obtain their bachelor's degree uh, from USF really great opportunity. We are certainly a very affordable uh, institution. Um, in fact, HCC has one of the lowest uh, tuition among uh, Florida. Uh, we also have uh, small classes, exceptional faculty, and we have the latest technology at half the cost than more compared to most uh, state universities. And the very important thing is that we share the same accreditation and now that i mentioned accreditation we are regionally accred accredited so that's the best accreditation that a post-secondary institution can have and that and having that accreditation guarantees that the student receive the same quality of education here at with us as a community college compared to um, the universities so, and also makes, uh, allows, allows for the, the classes taken in here to be transferred to want to us and other 
regionally accredited institutions. <clears throat> We're one of the very few community colleges in the nation that offer a housing opportunity, Hawks Landing. Landing. It's located by the Del Mabry campus. <clears throat> We're nationally we have a nationally recognized honors institute. It provides a pathway to nationally ranked colleges and universities. And the same thing, they, it offers smaller classes, leadership development, specialized advanced advising and transfer and scholarship assistance. We have a dedicated F1 student support services offered by the Center for International Education at the Del Mabry campus, where we provide, where we provide guidance and admissions of F1 visa, questions, orientation, academics, housing, and transfer to a four-year degree. We have a very culturally diverse campus. Like I mentioned before, annual enrollment averages 45,000 students, more than 3,000 students from over 130 nations who immigrated to the US and decided that Tampa Bay was their new home. Uh, more than 200 international students attending on F1 visas. We certainly have an academic ex excell excellence, one of the nation's leading producers of associate degrees. The majority of our AA graduates transfer to a four-year degree. Our associate in science, especially, especially health sciences and hospitality management, are highly sought after. And 95% of faculty members hold an advanced degree. And uh, like, like I said before, we're regionally accredited, more specifically through the Southern Association of Colleges and Schools, or also known as SACS. We're nationally ranked, at, we have a nationally ranked athletic teams, uh, which enrich the college experience via intercollegiate uh, sports. We have a men's and women's basketball team, we have a men's baseball team, and we have a women's softball, volleyball, and tennis team. <clears throat> and of course, like I mentioned before twice, our accreditation, we're regional, regionally accredited. So talking more specifically about our enrollment step or admission process, we have close to nine steps that the students can follow to be able to be considered to attend at HCC. We're very flexible uh, in, in admissions compared to most university where admissions is very competitive. Uh, the first step will be to apply. The, the, the students will find our um, ACC application in our website. Number two, it's very important to determine residency for students because this will make a big difference on how affordable classes can be. Um, just to give you an example, uh, students do need, if the students wants to be categorized as a Florida resident, which means that they have, they've been, they have been living here in the state of Florida for over a year, they need to provide some documents that shows that they have been working, that they have been um, living here in Florida for over a year, and therefore uh, say that one class of three credits, it will cost them $315 here at HCC, and that's for this academic year and the next academic year. That can that price can change um, every year. So, however, if they're if they're unable to provide those documents, if they don't provide those documents, so that same cost can cost over a thousand dollars. So that's a big difference, and that's something residency is something that it's that it's it's attached to any public institution here in the state of Florida, any community college or any state um, university. Number three will be securing funding. So that I went through through that a little bit with early to the today um, with filling out the FAST application, filling out their uh, Florida financial aid ap application. Um, getting funding through private uh, organizations and, you know, our institutional scholarship through our HTC Foundation. Another thing that the students need to do is submit their transcripts from high school and any other, um, since we're, we're talking more particularly to um, information for high school students, so they, they, they will need to submit their high school uh, transcripts. 
Also, I did want to point out, going back to the residency, being that they're high school students and they're younger than 24 years old, they will the documents that they need to provide to declare for, for that residency have to come from the parents or legal guardian. Um, number five was once the students submit the application, that takes about three to seven days to get processed. They will receive a student ID number. They will register uh, for the student portal and in, in other uh, online services that they can take advantage of. But then they will be able to connect with an academic advisor to to get advising on that first semester list of classes based on the program of interest. And they need to attend a new student orientation as well, which they will, they will learn a little bit of, of, of HCC in general and our, the services that are available to them. Uh, finally, they will pay for classes, register for classes, and then pay for, pay for the classes. Once they're, they pay for the classes, they can uh, get their uh, ID, their, their card, and parking decal, and buy the, the textbooks for, the, for their classes. So this is what I have for, for, for you today. Uh, I am going to, I, I see that we have three participants. I'm going to allow for a Q&A session. If you have a question for me, please uh, use your chat option below and ask, you know, go ahead and, and feel free to type any questions that you have for me. And I'll give you about a minute to do so, just to make sure that it will, it, you know, I'll give you enough time to, to type those questions. Hello, Leah. Uh, thank you for your question. So like I said before, HCC is very flexible with, um, with admissions. Um, I did fail to mention that uh, requirements, admission requirements, it's a, a high school diploma and a GPA of 2.0 or higher. And students should submit that application as soon as possible because that will allow them uh, to to take advantage of a lot of opportunities, especially scholarships, and um, and also register for classes early or very early, um, and that will allow them to to create a schedule that is that work for them that is very the most convenient. It can be select, you know, professor professors of their choice, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, in in reality. We do take uh, applications even uh, two weeks before the start of classes. Again, that's not ideal um, because they will really leave a really short window for students to truly, truly prepare for the college experience and you know submit their financial aid um, information, uh, register for classes. Um, they will have to if they register for classes. Uh, at that time, if too late, uh, too close to the first week of classes, and they're, once they register, they have to pay for the classes. They need to make sure that there's funding to pay for the classes. Um, otherwise, the class the classes will drop for non-payment. So I hope that answered your question. Hello, Mina. Yes, absolutely. I can uh, briefly talk about the dual enrollment option. So our students um, here in Hillsborough County, public schools have the option to do dual enrollment classes part, or, and be part of the dual enrollment program. Um, now for summer 2020, I don't think we offer uh, dual enrollment classes for summer. It has to be fall and, and spring semester during the actual school, uh, school year at the, you know, um, at the high school. Um, 
there's a very, um, they, they will fill out the application, the HCC application, but it, it has to be the one that it's for dual enrollment. Um, they need to, we really depend on the classes that they want to take, that they will have to take a, a placement test to identify if where whether the student can start at a col with color level classes, such as English Composition 1, uh, Intermediate Algebra, College Algebra. But there are some other classes that don't require um, college level English and math. So you, that will be like your SLS 15, which is, is, is study skills. And that's just an introductory course for uh, post-secondary and more specifically for his rural community college. Uh, the way that they can start a process, it will be at, with their uh, academic school counselor at the schools. And the class availability or offering will, will be specific to that school. Each school, I believe, offer don't offer the same uh, courses uh, than other high schools, if that makes sense. Um, Did I answer your question? All right, well, if there are no more questions. Oh, there is one more question. They were asking um, one more question. Um, can they take online classes for summer? And I think, is this still referring to the dual enrollment? Um, you, and I, honest, I can, I am not very familiar with the dual enrollment, uh, at least for summer. So if you can write down my email address, it's in there on the screen uh, and my phone number. Reach out to me, and I will I will find out find out for you. But as far as I know, um, dual enrollment classes are limited to fall and spring. Um, now, if, if a student is already an HCC student, graduated from high school, uh, they can certainly take uh, online classes during the summer semester. And let, please let me know if if I answer your question. Uh, Nina. And I, while she, uh, she Nina types, um, I do welcome you to contact me uh, through my email and uh, my phone number. Um, I do go out a lot to the high schools and uh, the community. So if I don't answer the phone, your phone call, you can leave a voicemail and that voicemail goes directly to my email address. So I, even though I, don't, I am not physically in my office, I will know that you uh, left me a voicemail and I'll be able to follow up with you once I get, in, get to the, my office or even call you from another phone. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we thank you so much, Tanya. You did, you've done a beautiful job with sharing all that great information about enrollment at HCC. And hopefully um, we, this, vi this webinar is being um, videotaped, and so it will be posted on our website. So feel free, um, participants, to share the video with the webinar with your friends and your family members so that they can hear all the Tanya has shared today. Thank you so much, Tanya. Thank you. And with that, we thank everyone for participating with us. Thank you for being with us. And we hope you have a pleasant, terrific Thursday. Every Thursday, almost every Thursday are the webinars. So just take a look at our catalog. And Tanya will actually share another week this same presentation in Spanish. So thank you again, Tanya, for being such a great partner with Hillsborough County Public Schools. Absolutely. And thank you for allowing me to collaborate with you as well. All right. Good night, everyone. Good night.